Just ahead on American Black Journal, we'll talk with three local history makers whose stories are included in the nation's largest video archive about the African American experience. Plus, a local organization is giving students the tools to succeed in the school and in their future careers. We we'll have a great program today, so stay with us. At DTE Energy, we believe that we have a greater responsibility. We believe that being part of a community means being involved in the fabric of that community, investing time, effort, and resources in the communities we serve. DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of American Black Journal. Welcome to American Black Journal, I'm Stephen Henderson. The Library of Congress is now the permanent home for a collection of thousands of videotaped interviews detailing the black experience. The archive is called The History Makers and it's the largest African American oral history video collection in the country. The first person accounts are from well-known and unsung African Americans who talk about their struggles, dreams, and achievements. I'm pleased to welcome three of those history makers to American Black Journal. Entrepreneur and former football star Mel Farr, Motown legend Martha Reeves, and renowned tenor and educator George Shirley. Thanks for being here. This is probably the most powerful star-studded uh, cast I've had on this show. Uh, I grew up uh, sort of idolizing and listening and watching all of you. So uh, it's a real honor to, for me to have you here on American Black Journal. Well, Thank a, you for it's inviting me. Yeah. 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 So tell me about the project. I mean, that's that's something that uh, you're giving these oral histories to the Library of Congress. Well, you know, uh, Juliana, uh, um, uh, several years ago, um, you know, thought of the idea of, uh -huh. uh, of archiving uh, the uh, the events of uh, of, of uh, Black History Makers, you know, oh, yeah. and uh, and she's done a great, great job, I, I tell you, of, of getting that information and, and archiving it so that uh, uh, our grandkids and grandkids uh, uh, could uh, uh, to to see uh, what uh, you know we've done, and, right? Uh, and uh, so I think that that's uh, very important. Uh, what she's done, and uh, we really, really need to take our hat off to her. Right, right. And you guys are also going to, to schools to talk to, to young kids about this stuff, just to remind people where we all come from, right? Yes, uh, my yeah. visit to the Duke Ellington School of Performing Arts was really exciting. Uh, some of his uh, relatives are actually there, some of his Oh, is that right? Yeah, uh, as uh, as yes. uh, students? As students. Really? And uh, it gave me an, a, 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 quite a, a concert very, very talented babies being trained in the right way. Uh, I always give advice to if, if you want to be in this business or to excel in it, uh, learn from professors, from uh, learned professors, right. similar to the one sitting to my right, right. who was my teacher <laughs> in high school. Oh, is that right? Yes. I did not yes. know that. And I'm very, very happy to be here to, uh, to express how important uh, History Makers is. Uh, Juliana Richardson uh, has uh, given me the uh, privilege of seeing a lot of her co uh, concerts and her uh, exposés of different scientists. And right. I learned a lot of things about our history. You got to know where you've been in order to know where you're going. Sure. And she's making a wonderful contribution to the world with her uh, her uh, videotaped right. uh, interviews. Yeah. yeah. This uh, collection is not only for us; it's for everyone. Yeah. Here in this country and in the world, because this is available to anybody to who anybody. can tap into it. Sure. It's extremely important, uh, not only for our people, but for others to know not only what those of us who've had the opportunity to perform and be in front of the public uh, on the world stages, but also to know what people have contributed over the years who don't make the media, who don't uh -oh. get into the headlines. Right, right. These are people who doctors, lawyers, business persons, uh, youngsters need to know that there's a wide range of possibility for sure. them. I have, over the past three or four years, uh, visited public schools, elementary schools in Ann Arbor, where I live. And, you know, children are the hardest audiences <laughs> in the world, <laughs> you know. But they are eager, they're sponges, they're eager to hear what you have to say and the message always is, stay in school. Don't let anyone talk you out of fulfilling 
completing your education. What you want to do and, and your dreams. Because there are, there, there are tremendous influences outside yeah. that will tell you, oh, you don't need to go to school. You, you can make it on your own. And that's not the message that young people need to hear. Yeah. It's hard work. It's <laughs> frustrating. But it pays big dividends. Yeah. Yeah. It, it strikes me that all three of you uh, uh, came of age uh, at a time when it was really different, uh, especially for African Americans in terms of opportunity. And I'm not sure uh, that, that young people today quite appreciate the, the, the difference and, and, and how difficult it could be. Yeah, you know, for the last three years, uh, I have uh, gone to King High School uh -huh. and uh, we have the, uh, the freshmen uh, come to the, uh, to the uh, audience, is the audience there. And uh, one of the things that I talk to them about is, and which I think is the most important thing you can do is, is set goals. You know, you've got to have some goals. You know, right. if you don't have any goals, uh, you don't know in what direction you're going to go, you know. So, so uh, you know, I talk to them about goal setting, uh -huh. you know, because I think at that age, you know, right. goal setting is so, so very important uh, in uh, what, what they're going to, to be. Because if you don't set any goals, uh, then you're um, um, apt to uh, go to the, the, the wrong direction, sure, you know. Sure. Your goals is the thing that, that keeps you on a on straight and narrow, you know. And so I, I think it's just great that she, uh, Juliana, has, uh, with the history makers, have, have gotten us uh, to come uh, back and go into the, the, the high schools and, and talk to the kids about, yeah. uh, about uh, their education and, uh, and about uh, obtaining, you know, those goals in life. Because, uh, you know, I say, uh, you know, what is happiness? You know, it's, it's happiness eating and drinking and being married and everything is going my way with the absence of conflict of tension. But happiness is, is as you as you accomplish your goals and objectives in life, the happier you are. So right. most important thing, if you're going to, you know, you, you know, and I say, first thing I say is, how many out here want to be sad? <laughs> nobody. 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 Right? Nobody. nobody. Right? How many wants to be happy? <laughs> Everybody. I say, hey, so, hey, this is a way that you can, you, what you right. can do in order to achieve happiness. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you started uh, the dealership uh, after your football career, I imagine, though, that, that uh, being African American, that was something that probably some people said, hey, you know what, you can't do this. Well, you know, it's, it's amazing how things happen, you know. Uh, <laughs> my father uh, was a uh, car dealer uh -huh. in Beaumont, Texas, uh -huh. right? and uh, he was a used car dealer. Uh, so uh, my brother and my father and I, we used to uh, go to the junkyard, get cars and fix them up and sell them, all right? right. And so I, ironically, uh, you know, I, I get drafted by the Detroit Lions, I come here, and uh, boy, there was a ride here, all right? And at that time, Henry Ford the second said, you know what, we're going to make automobile agencies available to African Americans. To African Americans, right. And so I say, wow, you know, that's the brother of the guy who owns the lines. Right? <laughs> so you know what I did uh, is I went to uh, and got a job at Ford Motor Company. And for seven years, I worked at Ford Motor Company to, to learn the, the so retail automotive business. Bu business. Yeah. And so when I uh, quit playing football, boom, I stepped right into uh, to business right. and grew the largest African American business in the country. Yeah, yeah. And, and thinking about that sort of second act, I think, is something that... Uh, that I can feel all three of you have done. I mean, you with the dealership, of course, uh, Councilwoman Reeves, you Absolutely. went into politics. That after, was also uh, one of the first artists on, on um, Motown to go on the Motown Review. Right, that's right. They, that's they grouped right. Uh, at least 12 acts and a 12 piece band, put us on a broken down trailway and had us tour the, the United States. And I've seen uh, segregated audiences but become intimate at yeah. the end of a show, hugging and kissing people who they wouldn't speak to prior to <laughs> right. the show starting. Right. Uh, having uh, been gr growing up in the church, having my, at, at age of three at my grandfather's church, win candy with my two older brothers singing gospel, and having that as roots in my life, uh, knowing that uh, prayer, answered prayer, is the result of, uh, I'm the result of a product of good teachers, but answered prayer. Right. Yes, having faith, knowing that uh, it's God's talent, and uh, He's our director. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, Mr. Shirley, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, always struck at uh, uh, black classical musicians uh, and, and the sort of struggle that they must uh, encounter just in terms of uh, surprise, really, that, 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 uh, that, they, that they do that. It's just not something uh, that, that I think a lot of people think of when they think of African-American artists. Well, one of the things that I, I'm most proud of is the fact that I've been able, I've been blessed with the opportunity to make a career uh, and become successful at doing something that most people didn't expect me to do. Right. And that's God's doing. Yeah. Because when I was in school in Detroit, uh -huh. you couldn't drag me to an opera. Yeah. <laughs> My, you know, spirituals, growing up in the church, 
Uh, art songs, yes. I loved cl uh, symphonic music, but yeah. I thought opera was pretty silly. Yeah. But it was when I was in the army that someone said, you know, you can, you have the stuff to become an opera singer. So I thought, well, since someone's said that who's been there and done it, I didn't want to come back to Detroit to resume my teaching career, which was interrupted by the military draft. By the military, sure. Uh, I didn't want to come back without taking the chance. I thought, well, if I come back and resume teaching, and I have a really talented student who shows career potential, well, I'm not going to tell him about the business. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. So I gave myself two years to find out about it, <laughs> and it went further than I thought, yeah, which right. simply means for me that when I walked out on stage, this little company up in Woodstock, New York, to make my debut in Deflator Mouse, I knew I was doing what I was born to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, God guides. Um, it's interesting <coughs> that Mel talks about goal setting. Uh -huh. Two of the disciplines in education that have come under tremendous attack and are still under attack are music uh, yeah, and sports. Right. Sports and arts, yeah, that's right. That's right. But both of, both of which are about goal setting. Yeah. Uh, the football player, you have to have a goal in <laughs> mind when you get the ball. Right. And you learn how to do what you need to do to get there and achieve that goal. Yeah. Same with music. You have a performance to give, and you have to work to do it. And these are disciplines that teach young people how to pursue their goals. And unfortunately, people who are responsible for well, education these days don't right? understand that it's not so much about becoming a professional football player, a professional musician. It's about training the, the brain the mind to, uh, to think in certain right, ways. And that discipline. I, uh, Councilman, I know you do a lot of work uh, with young people sort of encouraging uh, arts education and things like that. And I let them know that I'm just a product of good teachers. Had I not had a commercial course in high school, I could never have made it at Motown because yeah. I was a secretary for nine months before I went on tour right. because I had the skills, because I could answer a phone properly, yeah. and because I knew how to, the protocol of an office procedure. So it's all about getting in where you fit in. But if you have your education, you could do all things. Yeah. So now you said that uh, he was your teacher yes. in high school. Yes. Where, 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 where was Miller. it? At Miller. At, at Miller High School. Yes. Miller High school. I was there for wow. two years and then they made it a, a junior high and sent us to Northeastern High School where right. I learned to sing opera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you Abraham, know, we have two singers Abraham on the Silver. panel here. We'll yeah, be Abraham lucky if we... Silver was my teacher. He allowed me Henry Ford Auditorium doing Bach's aria. And that wow. was my debut. Forty-five hundred people. Then I got I got bit by the bug. I yeah. wanted to be in show business. <laughs> right. Uh, so tell me how you. I mean, you you defined Motown, of course, and 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 how did you get from from where you were to there? Just uh, having the skills. Yeah. I had been trained in high school to yeah. sing, so I went there already full of the knowledge of singing. Right. Plus, I also listen to the radio while I washed the dishes in my house because I'm a family of 11 children. Right. Dad worked for the city of Detroit, so I'd sing t opera as I washed dishes. <laughs> Those are great. So stories. I had classical roots. Yeah. So uh, you know, and these are the stories people can hear in the yes. in the history makers. So uh, it's really great to have you guys here. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me today. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Just ahead on American Black Journal, a local program is putting young people on a path to success. That's next, right after this look at some important moments in Detroit's black history. I'm Ken Coleman with a look back at African American life in Detroit. This week in 1908, Sonny Wilson was born in Columbia, South Carolina. Wilson was an influential business and civic leader during the Paradise Valley era of the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. In 1964, Grammy Award-winning gospel artist C.C. Winans was born in Detroit. And in 1961, Otis M. Smith became the first African American to serve on the Michigan Supreme Court. These are significant events this week in Detroit's black history, taken from the book On This Day, African American Life in Detroit. Every day, Vista Maria provides treatment and support to young women and children who've been abused, neglected, and traumatized. Now, the nonprofit organization is also reaching out to at-risk teens in Wayne County to help them become productive members of the community. Vista Maria's Journey to Success program offers mentoring, training, academic support, and after-school activities. Joining me now is the program's director, Greg Everett, along with two of the young people in the program, Elsie Soto 
and Gary Payne. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So it's funny that you're, that you're here talking about uh, Vista Maria today. I was having a conversation just this week with somebody about Vista Maria and, and the work that goes on there. And, and we were talking about, wouldn't it be great if we could take the work that's being done there and sort of expand it yes. uh, to, to, to other to other kids, and sounds like that's exactly what yes, you're doing. Yes, that is exactly what we're doing. <laughs> Perfectly say. Yeah. Um, this, the Journey to Success program uh, was created um, at Vista Maria to provide just that: those opportunities, those uh, academic enrichment opportunities, and um, fun extracurricular activities after school. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of our services do um, are offered during the school day. Um, but just that, to provide those um, opportunities for youth in the community during those peak hours after school that ones would call the most at-risk Yeah, that's where hours. you get in trouble. Right, right? exactly. Yeah. Um, so the programs that we provide are our after-school activities component mm -hmm. where you can get dance and cooking and yoga and archery and, you know, be exposed to basketball and different athletics. Um, just just to name a few yeah um, as well as our group insight based mentoring program that's called dreams uh -huh. dreams realized through education and academic mentoring uh, as well as our community based component which offers uh, master's level counselors uh, to provide crisis intervention yeah. individual group family counseling to those in the community yeah so. yeah and so uh, w what do you feel like uh, you guys have learned with the population that you serve at Vista Maria that's sort of applying uh, to, the, to these other kids? Yeah, well, um, one of the unique things about um, the Journey to Success program are the different components okay. um, that work um, hand in hand with one another. Uh -huh. So the, the academic um, enrichment that goes on during uh, the DREAM program with it working in hand in hand with the after school activities program as well as community-based counseling, most of our students are in most of those, all of those They're components, the, and that's what really makes it work. Okay. Is a student that's really um, engaged in all you of those. got the whole different. picture uh, exactly. that, you're, that you're addressing. Yeah. Okay, so Elsie, uh, tell, uh, tell me about the program. Um, well, I first started coming to the program last summer. Uh -huh. um, my mom had recommended it to me, and um, I didn't know what it was. <laughs> I was kind of real hesitant about going, but when I first when it was kind of great. There's uh -huh. so many kids and every, you get to know so many people and there's so many opportunities. And I'm not very outgoing uh -uh. about a lot of stuff <laughs> like that. So when I went, it was a little bit out of my comfort zone. But as time went by, I got real comfortable with everybody. and was so, it was, it's just, it makes you feel welcome. It yeah. makes you feel like you just belong somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Did you have that same kind of experience, Gary? Uh, yeah. My grandmother was actually suggested uh, by, she took a suggestion from another parent, uh -huh. and I was so reluctant to go. <laughs> I like to sit in the house and read all day. And she, <laughs> yeah. There's nothing and, um, wrong with that either, by the <laughs> way. <laughs> it's okay. But um, when I actually got up there, I was surrounded by these 40 kids I didn't know, and I was just so shy, and I wanted to go home. But as the, like, as the, just the first day progressed, it was just like, I like this place, you know, yeah. I like these people, and I liked it so much to the point to where I actually started attending the school there. Oh, and, oh is that right? Yeah. At Vista Maria? Yes. Okay, wow. And so yeah. the school is open then to, to, to it, some of the kids who... It is. It's a public to... charter school okay. called Vista Meadows Academy. Okay, okay. So on our campus at Vista Maria, most of the students that attend our after-school programs there um, attend Vista Meadows Academy, but Elsie's a perfect example. She attends Dearborn High. Okay. And she found out about our service. So in, in that catchment area, we have several students from Cody's, from some kids in Inkster and that sort of thing. Right. Um, but the, the really nice thing that we've done once we started our services at Vista Maria, on Vista Maria's campus, is we did just that that you spoke about in the very beginning, we've expanded. Right. So last year, we moved into Harper Woods Middle School okay. to offer all of those components to okay. the seventh and eighth graders there. Okay, and so is this uh, available throughout the entire county at this point? Uh, yes, it yeah. is, um, and we're continuing to expand. Um, any student can actually be a part of our program on Vista Maria's campus. Uh -huh. Right now, currently, the services at Harper Woods Middle School are just for the seventh and eighth uh, graders there. there. Okay. Um, but our plan over the next several years is to expand in all of the different regions and areas of Wayne County. Yeah. And this is sort of filling a gap that's been left by sort of the retreat of not just the public schools, but of 
uh, rec centers mm -hmm. and you know the the demise of boys and girls clubs yeah. and uh, all the things that when when I was a kid growing up in the city that you had to to choose from mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what to do after school it's just not that much yeah anymore. there isn't yeah and so I mean that's that's why I, I love being able to um, manage and be a part of the journey to success is because it does fill that void. I mean, so many programs have been cut out of our public education, those yeah. extracurriculars mm -hmm. that you used to get, you know, that were just fun uh, we stuff don't to have do, right. you know, things right. to do, you don't have, but you can get them in, in the journey to success program. Right. Yeah. Uh, so what would you be doing if you were not uh, in this <laughs> program, do you think? Um, <laughs> Well, if I had never become in, like involved with them, yeah. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I mean, did you used to do before um, after school? <laughs> I went home and yeah. I would take naps. Yeah. I, I would do like I didn't and do homework. a lot, you know. Homework. homework of course. <laughs> I would I didn't do a lot after school yeah. before the program. You know, I occasionally would hang out with friends, but besides that, I wasn't involved with a lot of stuff yeah you know there was um before i switched over to dearborn high i was involved with a different program but because of me transferring schools i stopped being involved with them it was okay. a transportation issue so there was nothing for me to do yeah and when i got involved with them it was kind of like i'm a part of something <laughs> right. again, and that's such a good feeling yeah yeah and and at your high school is there not uh um mm, like clubs and stuff yeah like that. right they, I mean what do the um, other kids there do there at my like at Dearborn High they have a ton of clubs a ton uh -huh. of different activities to do um, I'm, all, I'm actually involved with theater with them you know which is really great yeah. but you know it's not the same okay it's like a it's not the same feeling you get yeah. when you're with the JTS and okay. all the mentors that they you know offer yeah it's just not the same feeling yeah and Gary, where were you before uh, before you came to, to Vista Maria? What uh, high school were you in? I was actually at Mulford. Okay, in the in the city. Yes. And and what was it like there for, in terms of the choices that you would have had uh, for after school activities? Uh, well, at Mulford they did have clubs, mm -hmm. not a lot, but they had clubs, anime club, uh, little theater. But mm -hmm. I was never really interested because they didn't have exactly what I wanted there. Yeah. Uh, I dance, actually. Okay. And um, I'm an author, uh -huh. so when that's I a, found that's out... That's a great, that's a great <laughs> profession. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I found out about Vista Maria, and they actually offered dance classes, and they had poetry clubs and everything, I was amazed because, I mean, I was never a part of anything like that. So when I joined those classes, I immediately began to feel like family. Yeah. And they really do make it their job to make you feel welcomed and to give you all the support you need and they throw so many opportunities at you it's it's amazing yeah yeah they both seem to sort of uh, talk about it as family as opposed to just a group of friends right and you know that's one of the things that's nice about the journey to success and all the different components is it does stay fairly small uh -huh. so that students are able to make those bonds not only between themselves but with um, their mentors, right. our coordinators that actually work within the program, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. I'm really glad that Elsie mentioned the mentors because, you know, without our partners in the community, without the mentors and volunteers that we have, you know, um, it wouldn't work. Right. So, you know, we, we are constantly um, building relationships with people to bring their talents and treasures to these programs right, that, right. that really make it go. Uh, you mentioned that Gary goes to the Vista Maria Medals Charter mm -hmm. uh, School. Uh, uh, I, I was unaware that you guys had a regular, just uh, opened to uh, everyone charter school. Yeah, yeah. When did it, that start? Um, probably, uh, I've been at Vista Maria for about three years, okay. and Vista Medals Academy has actually been on the campus of Vista Maria several years before okay. that. So okay. Quite a, quite a number of years now. Yeah. Um, and like I said, um, Journey to Success, when that came to campus a few years ago, it just enhanced right. all of the students' experiences. There. Right, yeah. right. Uh, well, you know, the, the, the core program there is for these, these uh, uh, Mostly, uh, well, it's girls, right? Uh, who, the, uh, the residential, the residential program, residential program is, yeah. is all girls, yeah. and there's a charter school called Claire B. Ford that yeah. is specifically for the girls that live there on campus. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what Vista Maria has that's traditionally That's what it always been, did. Yeah, right. exactly. Right. Um, but in with the you know addition of the foster care program and out. other yeah. community-based programs, this is really just. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I said before I was talking with somebody about it. I wondered if 
you know, maybe we could get a boarding school, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, for for other at-risk kids at, at Vista Maria, because you guys do such a good job yeah. there with that residential right. program. That's so idea. you never know, right? <laughs> you maybe never that's know, next. Right? <laughs> and maybe they would love to be students there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Sounds like, sounds oh, like yeah, they yeah, like yeah, it, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like they like it a lot. So, all right. Yeah. Well, great job, and uh, great to have you guys here, and good yeah, luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 That's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can get more information about our guests at AmericanBlackJournal.org. And as always, you can connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter. Plus, you can now hear episodes of American Black Journal on the radio. Tune in to WDET 1019 FM on Fridays at 9.30 and 7.30 p.m. Uh, we'll see you next time. This program is part of American Graduate. Let's make it happen. A public media initiative made possible by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. At DTE Energy, we believe that we have a greater responsibility. We believe that being part of a community means being involved in the fabric of that community, investing time, effort, and resources in the communities we serve. DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of American Black Journal.